Contrary to what its name implies, there is absolutely nothing natural about the force of nature. Its destructive force defies gravity by launching its victims helplessly into the air and into an orbit. But what if we took the force of nature and placed it into the real world? What kind of destructive force would this weapon truly have? Can we figure out how much force is in the force of nature? Ladies and gentlemen, hold on to your pants and put on your thinking hats because today we are going to be sciencing the force of nature. So, here we go! But first, what do I mean by force? The word force is thrown around so much that it seems like it could mean anything. The police force, the force energy thing in Star Wars. I am being forced to make this video right now. <laughs> no, really, I am. Please send help. They said if you hit the like button and subscribe, they'll let me go. It's not quite the same in science. In science, it has a more precise meaning, but in the most simple sense, it is a sort of a push or a pull. A force is what causes you to accelerate. Forces are what cause you to speed up, slow down, or counteract with other forces in such a way that your speed remains constant. If you were to push your keyboard across your desk, you're applying a force on your keyboard. A few other examples are gravity, the pull or push that you feel on a magnet, when you turn a corner and you awkwardly crash into a fellow classmate in school, or like that one time when you were eight and you thought it was a really good idea to roller skate while walking your big strong pet dog, then a squirrel runs by and you hold on to dear life because your doggy has ADHD, and you cannot apply a friction force to counteract your doggy's pull force. In science, there's a way to quantify forces, and we typically quantify them in the form of a Newton, kilogram force, or a pound force. And it was Isaac Newton who once said, let F equal MA, meaning that the sum of the forces acting on an object is equal to the mass of the object times the acceleration of the object. So basically, all the pushing and pulling on an object is equal to the product of its mass times the acceleration of the object. So now that we have a better idea of what a force is, let's go ahead and figure out how we're going to set up an experiment to ultimately find out how much force is in the force of nature. So for our experiment, I'm going to be using a scout as a test subject. So we're going to be shooting a scout with the force of nature. And then we're going to calculate how much force is acting on the scout. We definitely need to use F equals MA, so we're going to say that mass for the scout is about 60 kilograms or about 132 pounds. You could definitely tell that the scout can use a little bit more meat on his bones. So all we really need is acceleration, right? So that should be easy. Wrong. It's not easy. Because with the force of nature, when you get shot by bullets, it's actually a collision. It's not a simple plug and chug equation. During a collision, the acceleration typically spikes up something like this. It's not very predictable because it has to do with the how squishy the materials are, surface areas, and a whole bunch of different kinds of variables. And we're not just about to grab a whole bunch of random equations, throw in random numbers, and be like, oh! Oh, I did a science! I'm looking at you, game theorist! Wink wink! So how is it that we're going to be able to find the acceleration of our target? Ah, but there is one way where we can get a pretty good approximation. Say we know the position of our force of nature's target throughout the entire time that the collision of bullets and target is occurring. If we know the position at any given time throughout the trajectory, we can calculate the velocity, and then from velocity, we could calculate acceleration. And lucky for us, in TF2, there's a command called CL underscore show POS1, which will show us our XYZ position relative to the coordinate axis on a map, as well as our angles relative to the XYZ axis. 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 You might have noticed that there's a data point here that says velocity. This is actually not velocity, this is actually speed. And there is a difference between speed and velocity. We are not going to use the speed to calculate the acceleration because this will give us an inaccurate result. So we're going to calculate acceleration from the position changes instead. It would be a bit lengthy to explain the difference between speed and velocity, but you're going to have to trust me on this one. I can explain this on another video. 
Once we knew exactly what kind of data we were looking for, I grabbed my assistant Cutie Cat and then we went to Hightower. In Hightower we first found the direction of the x-axis and then we found the zero angle from that axis to make sure that our force that we want to measure is in that same axis. We found a calibration point. Go ahead and stand right there. As close to the edge as possible. So I'm going to go ahead and recalibrate. That's the zero, zero, zero angle. That's what I'm talking about. And jump. <laughs> Did you double jump? <laughs> no, just once. <laughs> Okay, now you're gonna do that to me, okay? And then we calibrated Cutie Cat. Okay, are you calibrated? Not yet. Okay, now walk backwards. Don't move your mouse, just walk backwards. Walked to the edge of the tower. Now go right, 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 this way. Follow me. Keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going. Okay, now uh, up the stairs this way. As close as possible to me, okay? Okay. We are doing science. Hang on <laughs> one minute. <laughs> then I jumped and at my highest point, I had Cutie Cat fire one shot at close range. Then we recorded the position of the scout on the map over the time of him being shot. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's silly. And we did this a few times to have a few different sets of data. Using Sony Vegas, we then took every single position with its corresponding time for as many frames possible. Then using calculus, we approximate the velocity with a numerical derivative of position, which is a change in position over change in time for each subsequent frame. Then we found the velocity for the entire trajectory of the scout. Then we did the same exact thing to velocity to find acceleration, which can be approximated with the change in velocity over the change in time for each subsequent frame. Then for each set of data, we took the maximum acceleration of each test run. We took the average maximum acceleration from all runs. Our average maximum acceleration came up to be 3,512 meters per second squared or 11,522 feet per second squared. So looking back at our F equals MA equation, if Scout weighs 60 kilograms, or about 132 pounds, if he accelerates at a maximum 3,512 meters per second squared, he would experience a tremendous force of 210,723 newtons, which is equivalent to about 47,372 pounds force, or 21,488 kilograms. Holy smokes, 210,000 newtons. That's an insane amount of force. Not only will the force of nature make you into Swiss cheese, but you'll be crushed with nearly the weight of two cruise ship anchors, or 2.85 times the weight of an elephant, above 13 cars, or uh, 210,723 fig newtons. You're like a car crash in slow motion? Try several dozen car crashes at the same time. It's about 21 times the amount of force of a car crash going at 65 miles per hour against a stationary wall. Why try to deflect an asteroid headed to the Earth with nukes when you have the force of nature to kick its butt into the sun. You know how a rocket going out into space shoots its propellant directly downward in order to thrust upward? Would the scout be able to do something like this and be able to go into space? Unfortunately, although it's a lot of force that the force of nature applies, and the force of nature not shooting continuously, we wouldn't be able to do that. The thing is that after using your force of nature, you need to reload for every two bullets shot. And because of that reloading time, you end up losing a lot of that velocity and going back down towards the center of the Earth. The escape velocity for the Earth is somewhere around 11.2 kilometers per second. Unless a scout could continuously use his force of nature without having to reload and somehow miraculously had a bunch of ammo in his weapon, not needing to reload, only then he would be able to escape the Earth. But even then it would take a very long time because the amount of thrust that you're getting isn't quite as much thrust as a rocket would have. The space shuttle, for example, can produce a sea level thrust of 179,000 97 kilogram force, or about 375,000 pound force, which is way more than what the scout, but it's still kind of fun to think of the scout going into space with his force of nature. So what is the verdict on the force of nature if it existed in the real world? It would be very, very scary. Thank you all so much for watching. Let me know in the comments below what you think. If you like this, please hit the like button. 
If you haven't done so, please subscribe. It would be a big help for me, a very small YouTuber, to be noticed. My channel is like a single water molecule compared to the sea of other YouTube videos out there. And the YouTube algorithm uses likes, comments, subscription, even shares to decide whose videos will even see the light of day. Let me know if you have an idea that you'd like to see in the next Let's Science this episode. Please check out our Twitch channel where we play all sorts of games live and chill out with the community. Thanks again everybody and I will see you Vikings on the next one.